G'day. I decided to drag this new camera out and give it a whirl uh, to film this episode. We'll see how it goes. After uh, the initial disappointments with it, I just threw it on the desk and left it there. So hopefully this will work better. So this uh, today's today's episode will be uh, a break for the spindle or spindle break for uh, the lathe. A little while back I bought a bicycle disc brake, a hydraulic actuated disc brake. I've done nothing about it, so it's time to do something with it. Let's get on with it. So these are the component parts I have for it. This is the disc rotor. It's uh, put the glass on so I can read it. This is uh, it's 140 millimeters. Uh, it's not that big. I'm going to make a, a boss for the center of it. It's come with its own screws and everything for it. Uh, that's this little hydraulic brake caliper. I don't know how I'm going to shorten up this cable. No big deal if I can't. I might be able to find a bike shop someone that can do it for me. Uh, I went down to the local engineering place to buy some, uh, some aluminium bar stock and all, I, all they had was this uh, off cut. And it, is, it is just an off cut but it'll do. I can turn that round. I turn one end down to 22 mil with a shoulder on it so I can push it up into the spindle. Then it has to stick out uh, out of the back cover 40 millimeters, and then I will fix it into, uh, into the boss, which I will make out of this. And one of the reasons I bought the, uh, the bandsaw was so you could cut stuff like this up with a hacksaw. So I'm going to go cut that in half with the bandsaw. Uh, but the first thing I will machine will be this. I need to turn that round, so we'll uh, do that first. Alrighty, so uh, taxi next day. I set this thing up in here just roughly because there's quite a bit of meat to come off this, uh, so I wasn't overly careful with how I actually set it up. Anyway, I uh, took a couple of cuts off it, knocking the corners off, and just checked to see how I was going. And that little bit of a taper I get when I'm turning turned into a whole lot of taper over this distance. And there was a half a millimeter or a little bit more between there and there. So I spent three or four hours yesterday afternoon messing around with this, uh, trying to get rid of that, and I'm pleased to say that I eventually did, and I'm pretty happy with the result. It's uh, it's pretty bloody close, and I'm pretty happy with it now. So it's 28:49 that end. Uh, come on, 28. Come on, 49 this end, 48. So uh, I don't think we get much better than that. So we'll press on now uh, and finish turning it down. Alrighty, so uh, we've got this all round now and it's time to uh, turn down 60 mil of it to uh, just a tad uh, under 20 millimeters, maybe 19.8. This is about 24 at the moment, so that provides a shoulder when I stick it up into the into the spindle. Just jagged myself before while I was cleaning the floor. Sick of giving blood here. All right, so we'll get on with this. I forgot to mention before, while I had some downtime uh, doing the renovations and additions to, the, to my workshop, I'd mentioned earlier that I might replace the bearing up the back of the uh, spindle, and that's it there. I've replaced it with a uh, roller bearing, or a tapered roller, and it appears to, uh, to have gotten rid of a lot of that, that shuddering and shaking and grinding I was getting. So, happy about that one. Where are we at? Nineteen point seven five. I might just back that off just a little. Alrighty. this and might just do a spring pass if I have to.
that's a damn nice finish on that. I hope it's the right size. I just took uh, another 100th, which would be 200th. Beautiful. That'll do me. All right. So the next the next step should be to drill it and bore a taper inside here. But I don't know that I have the room here, so I might wait till everything's round and I can get it back up in here a bit further and uh, and then do it then when it's not sticking out so far so uh, we'll get on with the next step alrighty so while well, I've still got that four jaw in there we'll do something we'll cut this in half and uh, turn this thing around not much left in this tin So much easier than a damn hacksaw. Take off there. <laughs> Nearly there. Alright, now that we've got that round and faced off. Alright, so uh, I'm just going to machine it round and then I'm going to bother all this stuff and uh, just needs to be around 55 mil something like that 55 60 is probably a bit much yeah 55 will do so we'll make this 55 millimeter uh, well machine a shoulder in there as thick as this there's only just under two mil 55 mil round Mmm, good hard to get in there. I wonder about myself sometimes. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'll be turning that down to 55 millimeters. I'm not doing that to it. So look, what size is it now? It'd be just under 60, I think. 57.6. So it hasn't got to have much taken off it. I'm an idiot, truly, truly an idiot. This is what happens when you don't have plans sometimes, you, you sort of lose track of where you should be. What you should be doing. What I should be doing is turning it to the centre diameter here. It's 33.3. Yep, 33.3. Turn down to that size or thereabouts. Five point nine. Absolutely perfect.
just needs to be a little deeper. Just a smidgen. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. All right, now we need to drill a big hole at the centre of it. Alrighty, righty, uh, not impressed with what's happening with that new camera, so I've gone back to my old one. Uh, I said a while back I should invest in a bigger drill, and I have. I've got a 19mm drill in now, and the biggest one I had before was a 16. I've set this up, trued it up, and uh, knocked the, best, the rest of that square off there. So I drill a small hole in it. Now I'm going to stick a 19mm hole through there because what I want to do is I want to be able to mount this uh, on there as well as the brake so it'll be on one side of that disc and the brake will be on the other so I can yeah, lock the spindle up and then use this for marking things like uh, making the dials that are made for this cross load so we'll drill a hole in this about that bit finished really except for drilling and tapping some holes on it for the uh, bolts chamfer that hole just a little bit as well it's a bit blurry all right get that thing the hell out of there and uh, set the other piece back up in there again oh right geez I hate four jaws it took forever to line this up but anyway Parting Alrighty, so uh, I've turned this down, it's just about down the size now, that bloody drill drilled this out to, uh, to about 19.3 or something, 19.4, it's pretty oversized. Four or so to come off. Push up over there like that. back the other end and bore out the uh, put that tape in the end of it getting there right now it's ice coffee o'clock so I'm gonna go get myself one of those and when I come back we'll uh, flip this thing around and do the other thing alrighty so uh, while you guys weren't looking I've drilled it from both ends I've uh, put a 10 mil and then a 12 mil reamer up uh, reamer uh, end mill up in here just to open things up a little bit and uh, I've made a couple of little cuts Oh Damn barking rats next door Jeez, they annoy me They're not real dogs, they're just rats that bark Start yapping and the 
woman next door doesn't bother to shut them up. Jesus, it's annoying. Uh, everything goes rusty so quickly here. It's just amazing. You need a reasonably good finish in this hole here so that uh, the, the wedge doesn't get stuck in there. Doesn't look too bad. So uh, all I really need to do with this now is just clean these edges up a bit, maybe polish it up just a tad with a bit of wet and dry, and uh, slid it in the bandsaw later. I'm going to make up a little uh, tapered. I'm going to do, use a steel one rather than aluminium plug for here and thread it there, mate. And uh, I'll do that next. Okay, this is a uh, this is a piece of uh, SS 400 16 millimeter rod that I bought to use for something and never used it. So I'm just going to uh, use it for this. Big storm rolling in here so I need to get a move on uh, get this done and everything cleaned up before it hits because I'm in the semi open out here. So I'm going to get on with this. If you're liking my videos I'd be really happy if you smash that like button because it just encourages me to uh, continue making these videos and doing these jobs and feel free to comment anytime you like. I would really appreciate it because I don't get a lot of comments. I have to short this up just a little, make it not so small in there, because it's bottoming out. Alrighty, I knew the battery was going flat yesterday afternoon and I was hoping to get uh, get that little wedge in there finished before it did, but it turned off, so no big deal, you've seen things parted off before. Right, so this is where we're at, um, and if you've liked what you've seen in this video up until now, how about doing me a huge favour and smashing that like button, it uh, helps me a lot. Um, so we've got one, two three components in this or four of the bolt. Um, we've ended up with a couple of horrible looking uh, grip marks on here from the chuck but I'll sort them out later. And this video is starting to drag on a bit uh, up around the 20 minute mark somewhere now I think. So I think I'm going to do this in two parts because I haven't given a lot of thought at the moment to uh, just how I'm going to mount this up on there. Um, Got to mount it to the lathe somehow, and I've yet to figure out how I'm going to do that, but uh, I'll, I'll get there. This is the mounting bracket just here, I'm going to put two holes in there, and we'll sit on here like this. So, uh, no, like this actually. I've got room for that disc here, I have. Um, and I've also got to come up with uh, some way of mounting this on the lathe, and also being able to uh, lock it. I don't think that'll be that big an issue. So uh, this will be the end of part one. Make sure you come back for uh, part two. And um, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Till then, toodaloo.